All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going over UFC Vegas 47, Hermanson versus Strickland. First, let's say thank you to our sponsor, Tampa Blessed, home team do good, tampablessed.com. Let's get right into it, though, Tom. We got the middleweight, Jack Hermanson, ranked number six. He's 22 6, plus 175 underdog, 33 years old. He's two out of his last four beating Shabazian, Gastelum, losing to Vittori and Cannoneer. He's going up against streaking Strickland, ranked number seven. He's 24 and three. He's a minus 210 favorite. He's only 30 years old, and he's on a five-fight winning streak, last beating Hall and Jocko. Tom, I mean, what do you see happening here? These guys are both very good guys. Yo, I got to say, good to be back, but also I got to shout out to the last pay-per-view, man. Big up to Francis on that and be able to make that adjustment. I had to recognize that because we haven't spoken since then. Francis on the adjustment and being able to pull out three rounds of Bulldog and Gon. Did not see that coming, man. But Gon's a special athlete. He'll be back. But, yo, Francis put his mark right there. Props to him. All right, here we go. American Sean Strickland, bit of a maniac. Uh, 30 years old, 6'1", 24 Three and zero overall, UFC eleven and three. On the other side, you got the Swede, Jack Hermanson, six one. He holds a one point five inch reach advantage over Sean. He's twenty two and six. UFC, he's nine and four. Sean is a brown belt in BJJ, and he's got five wins in a row. Jack on the other side, coming off, you know, a pretty dominant win in my eyes against Edmund. I thought he pretty much, you know, dominated that fight. You know, Edmund did not look as people expected. They thought Edmund was really going to kind of make a little bit of a comeback there, and he didn't. Uh, I think this could be a war of attrition, meaning who could really outlast each other physically, you know, because Sean seems to have a bottomless tank, and I think Jack's in pretty good shape himself. So this could really be that. And I think it's going to – it's a tough call. You know, I could see Sean overwhelming Jack on the stand-up or Jack taking Sean down potentially and controlling him. You know, Sean's never been subbed, though. He hasn't finished ever subbed. You know, if Sean has good takedown defense, which I think he does because I can't really remember him on his back. So – I'm a, that just tells me right there he's got good takedown defense. If he can prevent the takedown, I think he wins by just outpointing and outstriking Jack. I don't know if he'll finish him or not, but I think he'll win the fight um, by decision, and he might finish him. Uh, you know, I like Sean. He's a wild dude. As far as his personal stuff, it's kind of a mixed bag, but as a fighter – He's he's a fighter's fighter in many ways, you know. Definitely. He's kind of like Gaethje in the fact where he just loves to fight, you know. He talks a little bit wild, but similar to Gaethje in the fact that he's really just really likes to bang and likes to fight. Uh, and he's going to be up for it pretty much wherever, whenever. Jack, I think Jack really is looking to prove something here. You know, he came off. He had that grappling match against uh, – he had said, you know, Kamzat's – just an extremely powerful person. Uh, but, you know, this is, you know, good learning experiences for Jack. And Jack keeps evolving. So I'm wondering how that will look, too, with the grappling. If maybe he can grapple a little better, take him to the ground. I'm up in the air, really. You know, I am I would like – I am kind of would like to say Jack by decision. But I'm going to go with Sean here. I'm going to say that Sean prevents Jack enough times from taking him down and controlling him on the ground and just – Outpoints Jack with just pure, just um, multitude of just strikes. Right. Yeah, for me, this this seems like a matchup for Strickland. Hermanson seems to have problems with the bigger, stronger guys who he can't get and keep down. So I mentioned he beat Shabazian, a little bit smaller, a little bit younger. Beat Gastelum. The Gastelum was, like, really weird. I, I, that leg lock he had... I, I didn't understand why Gaslam couldn't get out, but that's besides the point. High level. It was almost like Brock Lesnar in his first it fight was, against Peter. Yeah, it was so very weird. weird. Gaslam got caught like that. Like he could have easily got out, 
But he lost to Vittori, a big, strong bruiser. Lost to Cannoneer, another big, strong bruiser. Those are his most recent losses. And Strickland is a big, strong bruiser. And the other thing is Strickland really doesn't waste any motions in the octagon. Every strike is efficient. It lands. It hurts. He's got that beautiful jab that just, it's powerful. Yet he can throw it all five rounds without a problem. As you mentioned, he's really a fighter's fighter. Whatever you think of him out of the cage, he's fucking nuts. But he gets it done in the cage. He's fun to watch out there. I think this fight stays on the feet. I don't see Strickland going on his back from Hermanson. He's the bigger guy. I bet he's the stronger guy in there. I bet the problem's going to be he's got good kicks. He's got good striking in general. I think it's going to be too much for Hermanson. I think we probably go late, though. Hermanson's definitely a good fighter. He's definitely got a chin on him himself. But I think we get a finish late, maybe fourth, maybe top of the fifth mm-hmm. round okay. for Strickland. Just too many jabs in the face for Hermanson to me. But right now, Sean's not printed, but we know Prism's right around the corner. I highly expect to see him in there. Um, with the win on this fight, you got to give him the buy rating. The guy is surging. The guy's ranked six. He's going to jump o- uh, He's ranked seven. I mean, he's going to jump over the six guy. We don't know exactly where he's going to fall, but he's definitely going to jump the rankings. There's not that many more guys left for him to beat till he deserves a title shot. He's he's knocking him down. <laughs> now, the Joker, solid fighter. I can't put a buy on him. He seems to struggle when he gets to the top, when he fights those bigger, better fighters. He, he loses. It's, it's there. You can take a look at his record. His cards are super cheap. He was just printed in 2020 products, still readily available. Um, I got to sell on Hermanson. I'm, I'm not sold on him yet. Even even though he some of those wins he gets to me, even they were they just weren't impressive wins. I, I'm not sure what was going on with those, but whatever. We'll move it right on. We got a middleweight bout. Kind of sad. This is the co-main event, if you ask me. Punahili Soriano, eight and one, minus one ninety favorite. He's 29 years old, and he's coming off his first loss in fighting to Brendan Allen. He's going up against Nick's Maximo, who's 7-0, plus 160 dog. He's only 24 years old. This is the Diaz prodigy right here. How does he hold up? Now, you're a big Diaz guy. There's not a lot of tape on nope. Maximo. You can watch a little bit. There's not a ton on him. But he mm-hmm. seems to have a few problems in there with the gas tank and stuff like that. I know he's undefeated, but... We'll, we'll see what happens. He's also young. He's only 24, 24 years old. 24 years I mean, old. Well, what do you, you know, see happening here? All right, so you got the American Punaheli Soriano on one side. He's not too old either. He's 29, 29. years old. He's 8-1 and one overall, 2-1 and one in the UFC, 5-9 in height. Nick, the American Maximov, 24, 7-0 overall, 1-0 and in the UFC, 6 feet tall. So he's got a few inches on Punaheli, and he's got a 3.5 inch reach advantage as well. Coming out of the Diaz camp, automatically got to expect he's going to be game. He's coming out of a game camp. Uh, Punahali, he's coming off that decision loss to Brendan Allen. Uh, what do I think? I think a good step up and test for Nick here. He's young and improving. I think Punahali just might be too much at this moment. I'm going to go with Punahali by punches round one or a decision. Ooh, round one. I, I like Or a decision, yeah. Yeah, this is a super tough matchup just because there's not a ton on these guys for the co-main event. But I do like Soriano to bounce back. We saw he definitely has that chin. He took a beating from Brendan Allen. Brendan Allen's never looked sharper. I don't know if that's the fact if Brendan Allen's been – Gaming or if Soriano just stepped up too much when he went up there and he's not as good as we think he is? That's the question. We're going to find out right now. But I think his toughness, his strength is going to be a problem for Nick. And We know Nick's probably going to want to grapple more. He's definitely more of a grappler than a striker. Puna, though, has a strong wrestling background, but Puna's a striker. The guy is powerful, man. He has that first-round knockout power. I think he's going to look to go big. I think he's going to want to get that knockout, get back on the map, get back as a climbing prospect, not as somebody they're calling a bust. But I think this is a big step up for both guys. Really, Brendan Allen's a step up, but he lost that one. So I think this is a good test, really, for both these guys. I'm thinking we get Nick to get his first defeat. I agree with you. I think it's going to be a decision, though. I don't think he's going to cave. 
is a little bit of a gas tank problem, but I think his chin will hold up. Those Diaz boys do something that make their chin strong. So we'll see if he's got that, that trick in the bag. Now, both men, they're not printed yet. We have to see if they come out. Like I said, Prism should drop in February. Even either guy gets a win, I think you got time. These guys are a hold for me. They're still very new. Even with the hype train behind them, they're going to come down before their next fight, and we can reevaluate them then. Maybe you could snag some for very cheap. But let's go right on. This is the fight that I know Tommy's excited about. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of guys are ready to see Shockvok back in the cage. Romanov, 14-0. and 0. Minus 240 favorite. He's 27 years old, very young. Last two victories were Michelle Prezeres Prez- 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 and Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Very tough opponent. Those are big step-ups in competition, and he answered the call. He's going up against Carlston Harris, though, who's 17-4, mm. plus 195, live dog here, 34 years old, and he's on a five-fight winning streak, last beating Impa Kasani. Tom, I mean, this mm. is a sneaky one. It's, it's hard. Yeah, I mean, it's, the hype train's so- here. If this guy spoke English well and had a loud mouth, I think he would have as much hype as Hamza does around him. The problem is he doesn't. So there's not, right. there's not enough hype around him right now. And if he gets this one, whew, this, he's going to be hyped even I mean, if he doesn't. If he gets this one, I think he'll have as many wins as Brady and being undefeated. That's the most in the UFC, 15-0. and 0. He's 14-0. and 0. Right. So so what do you see happening, though? I, I, think, mean, Carlson's, UFC, I think Carlson's so live dog little... here. What do you see happening? Oh, yeah, dude. I think this is very – this is no, like, sure shot by any means – Carlson Harris is a serious fighter. You got Shavkat Rachmanov on one side. He's the Uzbek fighting out of Kazakhstan, 27 years old, 14 and 0 overall, 2 and 0 in the UFC. He's six one in height. He holds a one each inch reach advantage over the Guyanese Carlson Harris, who fights out of Brazil. He's 34. He's six feet even. He's 17 and 4 overall. And in the UFC, he has the same record as Shavkat, 2 and 0. Shavkat doesn't even have a wiki page yet. That is going to change. All right. He's got over 200,000 followers, though, on IG. So it's not like he's some 20,000 follower guy. But I was kind of stunned that he didn't have a Wikipedia when I went to look. Um,. Maybe he does now since yesterday. I don't know. It is fight week. But, you know, that could have been created, but it wasn't. On the other side, you know, Colston Harris, he'd be a tough up-and-comer, in my opinion, even though apparently he's already been cut. Impa, you know, by strikes round one in September. And his previous win against, he had a previous win against Wellington Terman before Wellington kind of, got exposed a little bit. He was kind of riding pretty high and he had a lot of, you know, hype and for good reason behind him. It wasn't, you know, he had accolades he was building and this guy already had a win against Wellington earlier on. You know, I think it's a great matchup and it's a tough call here. I don't think that line is really that respectful of Carlson Harris's skill level. Uh, This could wind up being who has the better ground game and they're both good actually. They're both good at submissions. Uh, I'm thinking if Shavkat can avoid Carlston striking, and he's got sneaky striking himself, Shavkat, and land some of his own, I think he could work for a sub. I'm rolling with Shavkat, man. Round one or two submission. Yeah, yeah. Listen, this should be fireworks right here. Both men have skills everywhere this fight goes. Both men are finishers. Take a look at their records. These guys mm-hmm. finish fights. Yo. I love this one. The problem is I can't go against Shavkat until I see <laughs> someone beat him. I think That's he's right. I think he's got he fights long. He's got that crazy length. He seems to have a pretty good chin. I think he gets the finish and the hype train continues. His win <laughs> over Alex Cowboy Oliveira, though, was impressive to me. That dude is tough. That dude is not an easy out for anyone. Yeah, he's, a he's starting guy. to come down a little cowboy there, but 
still, you take out Cowboy, Cowboy's like that. Cowboy's main thing is his personal life, I think, interferes with his professional. It, it could be, but I'm just saying he's still very tough once he gets in that Oh, cage. yeah, for he's sure. Tough. Then he goes up against the tank, Michelle Prezeris. No easy, and he gets it done again. The guy is yeah. legit. Carlson Harris is streaking, though. I think the competition, Cowboy and Michelle, is a little better than Impa. Being that we know Impa got cut. I had high hopes for Impa. I actually thought I Impa too. was going to be climbing. But he, he's not. We might see him again so later long. on. Yeah, we might see him later on. We don't know. Yeah. Now, both men not printed. I think we got to see them both beat somebody with a big name before we really worry about it. I think Shavkat's going to have the hype around him, though, where people are going to try to get him with that speculation. So if you like him, try to get him in the prism set. If he comes in it, we don't even know for sure that he's printed. I mean, he better. I mean, you'd want him to be, but you just don't know. Carlson, I mean, 2-0 in the UFC, is he going to be printed? We don't know. Either way, we got to see him win. we got to see them beat some big names. But I'm riding Shafkot. I think he gets it done. He's got good knees in there inside the clinch and everything like that, too. He's sneaky with it. I think he finishes the fight also. I'm going with a round one KO for him. So I think these Woo! I think these two are gonna brawl and we're just gonna see who's got the better chin. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's move right on though. We got a Bantamweight fight. Miles John, twelve and one, another guy. Only one defeat in the octagon. He's a minus one ninety favorite. He's twenty seven years old. His solo loss is to Mario Batista, where he got caught with that knee. He's going up against John Castaneda, eighteen and five, plus one sixty dog. He's only 30 years old. A lot of young guys on this card. And he last beat Eddie Wineland, but he lost three out of his last five in total. So, I, Tom, where do you see this one going? Miles Johns got the hype train again. I mean, this is another guy. Yeah, Miles is young, too. Miles Johns, the American, 27 years old. On the other side, you got the American, John Castaneda, 30 years old. Uh, Miles Johns, 5'6 in height. Castaneda 5'5", five, five, but Castaneda holds a 5-inch reach advantage, even though he's an inch shorter. Miles John's 12-1 overall, UFC 3-1. He's, he's got two wins in a row, though, here. On the other side, John Castaneda, 18-5, UFC 1-1. One one. Castaneda's nickname, terrible in my mind, the Sexy Mexi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my pick, you know, I'm going to go with Miles here. Strikes round three or a decision. I think he's going to be too much, but we'll see, you know. Good test for John. Yeah, I feel like this is a setup for Miles, John. They, there's certain guys, Sugar, Patty, certain guys they know are very good and crafty, and they look to give them a winnable fight. I'm not saying he's guaranteed to win, but a winnable fight. I feel like Miles Johns has that skill set. They want this guy's twelve and one. He looks good out there. He's got a lot of things that the UFC wants. He probably fights regularly. All these things. I feel like this is kind of that setup fight. They're giving him someone that's very beatable. Like I said, three and five in his last fights. It's not great. He's lost three out of five. I mean, less than fifty percent winning record there. So I just really feel like he just started really finishing guys, Miles Johns. So if you take a look at his rhetoric. His decision, decision, decision. He comes in the UFC. He's finishing guys. KO. It's it's nice to see that. Normally it's the complete opposite where guys are KO, KO, yeah. KO, and then they go to yeah. UFC and they can't get it done. Decision, yep. decision, Especially loss, in decision. the women's division. Especially in the women's. You'll right. get like a killer coming out of, you know, other organizations with crazy like um, Wang over there. Coming, it was... Uh, she got it done. The other Chinese girl too, though, was like that. Yeah, I know. Yan but even they had some. They basically almost had like a 95 percent finish rate. Right. So, and that kind of went to Decision City. It got tampered a little bit. So, if you take once a look, you come into the UFC, John's record's the opposite. He's been getting finishes coming into the UFC. I like uh, no, to see that. I think I'm going to stay with that. I think he gets a KO. I think he's got a solid chin. And I think he, he knocks out Castaneda in this one. Probably second round, gets the finish. That's what I'm calling for. I'm not worried about either of their cards, but I will be keeping an eye on Miles Johns for the future here. We'll see if he's printed. Also, he's not printed, but I'm going to keep an eye on him. He could 
He's got a high work rate too, Miles. That's, I'm, I'm taking him. Anybody who goes from decision to decision to win to KO and sub and everything, finish rate in the UFC, that's that's what I'm talking about. Let's get right yeah. into the featherweight fight, though. Now, Hakeem Dabadu, 12, 2, and 1, minus 180 favorite. He's 30 years old, and his last was a loss to Mozart Ivlov, who's also a stud in his own, right? Everybody's excited about him. So, no shame there. Hakeem was a highly rated prospect for a long time kind of been quiet we haven't seen much from him lately he's going up against michael trezano he's 10 and 1 plus 155 dog and he's 30 years old also and he last beat ludovic klein in that crazy upset i think he was a three to one dog in that fight um i'm just gonna say this right here i'm putting a buy rating on michael trezano i might just go after all the future mullet men coming into the <laughs> ufc Brandon and, Allen. Uh, Brandon Allen. I like Brandon Allen. You you know that. Yeah, I, I'm but just saying he's got the mullet. I'm saying the future mullet men here. Trezano's in the future mullet men. I'm, I'm putting a buy rating on him just for that. The guy gets style points. Yo, just as a side note, this is funny because I've got a lot of uh, nieces. Uh, obviously, people out there don't realize this, but you know this, Mark. And I have a lot of nieces. I was visiting the other day, and I'm sitting around the table, and we were talking. And, you know, one of them's in high school, and she said, you know, mullets are becoming popular again. And I was like, for real? Hey. And she's like, some girls actually like guys with mullets. I believe it. That's what I'm talking about. Like, oh, wow, man. It's all coming back. The mullets on the return. Even in the youth. That's it. See what I'm talking about? Buy rating on Trezano. <laughs> All right, who do you got winning this one, Tom? What do we see going on? All right, so Hakeem on the one side, Duwadu, the Canadian, 30 years old, 5'7 in height, 2.5 inch reach advantage over the American, rocking the mullet, Mike Trezano, 30 years old, 5'9 in height. Hakeem, 12'2 and 1, UFC 5 and 2. Mike 10 and 1, UFC 3 and 1. Hakeem, 9 and 0 kickboxing record as well. So just realize this guy is real strong Muay Thai. That's that's his style. Mike on the other side, all three decisions and two were split on his wins. So two out of his three wins were split decision victories. So meaning they could have easily gone the other way. I think, you know, it's a tough test here for Mike and, and Akeem. And I'm thinking Akeem outpoints Mike and gets a decision win. But we'll see. But I'm going to roll with Akeem by decision. He's going to outpoint him. All right. I'm calling this also. This is probably going to be fight of the night right here. Mm -hmm. Trezano does not sit still. Akeem was so highly touted. He's got to get back to winning ways. I think, I think we're going to see fireworks here. I think this is fight mm -hmm. of the night. Like I said, Trezano's looking really good. Hakeem's been highly touted. As you mentioned, he has a strong kickboxing background. This is a really tough call for me because it, on paper, this looks like I should pick Dawudu all day, every day here. Right. But at the same point, Trezano's been upsetting all the guys that he's supposed to lose to. Ludovic Klein was one of those guys that, that thought he was going to rise right to the top, and this guy goes in there and does his thing. I think he's a strong, growing monster, man. I, I, I like the mullet, man. I think this is where I'm calling the upset. I'm picking the upset. I think Trezano, he's slick. He's very durable. Like he's got very good cardio in there. And I think he goes out, puts in work, and he's going to wear out the muscle-heavy Hakeem Daudu. Mm. I know Hakeem's highly rated. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins. And like I said, he should win. Almost like, I mean, 180 is not the prediction I'm saying. I, on paper, it looks like Hakeem should win. Nine no, Trezano, that time, but no, Trezano, Trezano is tough. my he got upset. His first loss last fight. Right, this is him. No, he won his last fight. So, oh, Mike's coming off a win. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. The one before that, he got his first loss. Right, but he he's coming off Yo, a win what's against. What's the line on this fight right now? Minus one eighty, Dawudu plus one fifty five. Okay, Trezano. so it's not insane. No, it's not insane. But I'm saying, for him to beat Ludovic Klein, that was an insane upset. Yeah, Nobody yeah. saw that guy. That guy's tough. That guy's good, too. I guess you're going to have to take a page out of Trezano's book on how to beat him. But I'm just saying, as he sits right now, Keem's got a lot more experience points. 
He's got a, a little bit better striking, a little crisper, a little cleaner. He's got a lot of edges. I see them. I just think yeah. that Mullet Man gets it done here. All right. I think, yeah, I like it. I, I like it. Now, Hakeem's been printed for a long time now. Like I, like I mentioned, he's been a touted prospect for a while. So he's in since 2019. He actually has a pretty strong following behind him. If you go to sell any of his cards, he does fetch some money. But he needs a win here. He needs that win bad. I can't put a buy rating on him if he doesn't pick up another victory or two. Trezano, I told you guys, I'm taking. I'm starting a buy rating on Mullet Man right now. Future Mullet Man, I'm taking. All right, guys, I've got Woo. one more fight for you. I'll be honest, they just added this fight. Sam Alvey is going. Well, they did the replacement. It was Phil Hawes. They replaced well, the last yeah, second. So Brendan Allen. Brown, last replacement, Brendan Allen. So I don't have all the paperwork on this. Tom did some on this. Brendan Allen, though, must be in great shape to step in that late of notice. Yeah. Because that was Phil Ivy was on that card till Tuesday, Phil Wednesday. Haas, Phil, Haas. Phil Haas. Phil Haas was on that card till what? Tuesday, Wednesday yeah. for Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey just, he wants that paycheck. Sam Alvey, Alvey hasn't won since 2018. <laughs> he has a strong following, but he's killing his following slowly. <laughs> And Brendan Allen is a workhorse. So I'm just going to give you my pick. I think Brendan Allen's improved striking. He's got great jujitsu, great ground game. If he can go out, throw, mix it up really nice, I think he should be able to beat Alvy. And if he loses, it does not look good for him. I might have to fall off that mullet man. Yeah. Alvy is is hurting bad. Tom. Yeah, Alvy hasn't won since he said 2018. And like he hasn't had a win in like, Seven fights. I mean, I think it was six losses and a draw. I don't have that in front of me, but it's something like that. Six losses and a draw in his last seven fights. His first, I was mentioning this to Mark, his first loss on this terrible streak of losses was to Anthony uh, Antonio uh, Noguera Rosario. Um, you know, big nog. I don't know. What, it was either big or little nog. But, you know, those guys have been out of the game for a minute. Yeah, long and, time. Uh, you know. So give us a breakdown so, here. What do you got on these guys? No, so basically, I mean, I'm not going to talk on this much. This is a quick one. Sam is going to be cut from the UFC if he doesn't get a win. If he's not cut, then, you know, good for him. Uh, but he's obviously somebody, he's got a connection because somebody really likes him. There's other people getting cut way before Sam. Uh so good for Sam if he doesn't get cut, but I feel this is a, a I thought last fight he was gonna be cut. So I was surprised that I saw him back on a card. I I like Sam. He always comes to fight. I just think Brendan Allen's gonna be too much, but I also feel like Brendan Allen he, that was unexpected. I did not I picked Brendan Allen last fight. He got finished. I did not expect that to happen. So I think the UFC is trying to get him back on track here with a fight against uh, Sam. And I think he was ready to go because he got called last moment. So he's been training, which means right. his mind, he knows that he needs to work on some stuff. And I think the key with Brendan is don't try to stand and prove your striker. Mix it up, man. I hope he mixes it up and subs Alvy round two. Right. I just want to say that Alvy and Cowboy – I think the only reason why they're not cut is they must have stepped up last minute so many times. Mm -hmm. The UFC gives them some bonus money. Basically, these fights are bonus money for them just because they've stepped up so many times. Like, hey, well, Cowboy's different because Cowboy has legendary stats. He's a Hall of Famer. Alvy could potentially be a Hall of Famer. I mean, no way. No way. I don't know. I don't know about that. He, he potentially could be. They're but, not even to me. They're not even on the same. Same it's, I it's about it's about company about up. it's about company I think, man i think cowboy has just done so much for the usc and he's got insane records of appearances fights even wins cowboy's got you know even though his record he definitely has his share of losses and he hasn't done well in recent times he has yeah, a legendary I don't think he's won in, in five or six fights either he's on his like six fights i know either. he's but got i'm just saying like company men UFC records his name is up there in a lot of stuff they're getting rewarded for company being company men that's all i'm saying that's the only thing you can yeah, really I think of. i won't argue with that and i feel you know, look man sam's nickname is smiley man so you know he probably brings that demeanor with him as well and he comes to fight i just feel like 
If Brendan doesn't win here. Yeah, it's a problem. It's I don't problem. know what's going to happen to him. He's in trouble if he doesn't win here. Uh, and I feel like Sam's in trouble as well. Sam's going to be fighting for his career. I don't know if Brendan's fighting to avoid well, a cut. Like, Sam, you never know, Sam's man. in the position to retire anyways in my mind. Yeah. So, But all right, guys. Brendan, we we got to wrap around. this one Tell up here. Ready. Yeah, we got to wrap this one up. Guys, have a great day, and we'll see you guys next time.